Yeah, she does yeah. it all the time. Just <laughs> yes. jump right in. Swan dive. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right. <laughs> uh, you, maybe we've had some rain cooled air. Uh, you would certainly feel a little bit of a cool down out there. We have had the rain cooled air across parts of the eastern plains. A couple showers and storms are marching across parts of uh, the Highway 50 area. Very slow moving storm here just east of Lamar, but it is sub severe, just producing a lot of heavy rain over a short period of time. In fact, I would not be surprised if we had a flash flood warning on that storm here over the next 10 to 15 minutes, so be mindful of that. Most of our storms will continue tracking north and east as we move through the afternoon and evening hours. A uh, few more storms wrapping up here for parts of the eastern plains and southeastern Colorado around northern Baca County and southeastern Prowers County with another round of showers and storms. And then I-25 and east, we wrap up with those storms, but west of I-25, I think most of our storms will be ongoing uh, through about midnight tonight, and this trend is going to continue through Friday as well. So if you're joining us around the Sangre de Cristos, Western Huerfano County or the San Luis Valley, uh, you're going to have some evening storms that are going to last well into the midnight hours. So if you live close to a river, a tributary, downwind of a burn scar, make sure you have a way to get your warnings and stay weather aware because flash flooding and the risk for flash flooding will continue to increase over the next several days. Let me tell you why. So the monsoon flow is in full swing. We know that, right? High pressure anchored off towards parts of Texas, clockwise flow. So it's kind of helping to pull moisture in from the Gulf of Mexico along with the Pacific. But there's another little key player now, and that is the tropical depression we have ongoing in the Gulf of Mexico. It is going to feed into this moisture plume just a bit, making it a bit more rich, uh, but it's not going to be an overall catastrophic event by any means. This tropical depression is likely to become a tropical storm as we move through the next 24 hours. Uh, being our next name storm of the season, you can see it's not very impressive looking. It's still very unorganized. It's about 200 miles south of New Orleans and tracking towards the Texas Gulf Coast. Some of what you're looking at here is those cloud tops or overshooting tops from some of the thunderstorms that are ongoing around that center of circulation. So it is deemed tropical depression eight likely to become a storm over the next 24 hours, tracking uh, just around the Corpus Christi area uh, for a possible landfall Friday night. But notice how it's going to feed into the moisture across parts of the southwest and pivoting that back into the state of Colorado with that high pressure and that clockwise flow for the next couple of days. So I do think some of our downpours could be a lot heavier as we shift into the weekend time frame. Friday, high temperatures are in the upper 90s. Our temperatures are not going to change for the next couple of days. We're still going to be unseasonably warm for this time of year. Winds pumping in out of the south. First half of the day nice and dry and then boom, here we go into the 1-2 o'clock time frame. We tap into that daytime heating and instability and that will help to develop showers and storms marching across I-25 for the afternoon hours. Notice the storms are going to be isolated though. So not saying it's going to be a washout on Friday. But Friday evening, uh, we could have a few downpours that you'll have to dodge here across parts of the Pikes Peak region if you're venturing out and about for the dinner time frame. West of Teller County and in parts of Pike County, we could see some heavier downpours just around Highway 285 and some of those burn scars that are fresh west of Denver will have to be monitored very carefully. Saturday, I think this is really where we start to get that very rich moisture coming into play. So between about 2 and 5 p.m., I think Colorado Springs, parts of Monument will have some heavy downpours, possibility for a little flash flooding, some ponding on the roadways, things of that nature. So if you have any outdoor plans for Saturday, probably want to have an indoor plan B. And notice how these storms are going to continue west of I-25 well into Saturday night and Sunday morning. So the flash flooding risk, I'm going to reiterate that, uh, is going to continue to increase through the weekend. Front will drop into the state of Colorado Sunday evening. Afternoon and Sunday evening, so that's the secondary factor there, and it will continue to give us noticeably cooler temperatures for the start of next week. Don't get your hopes up, I'm not talking 50s or 60s by any means, but I would say it's going to allow our temperatures to relax. The reinforcing shot of cooler air uh, will allow for more seasonal like temperatures and slightly below average for some locations. Look at Pueblo, we're going to be dipping into the upper 80s by the mid part of next week. But for the next couple of days, we continue to soar into the mid 90s for Canyon City and then that cooler air arriving early next week as that front drops into the area by Sunday evening. So the moisture, a great thing. Flash flooding as the side effect. We'll have to continue to watch over the weekend. All right, Mary, thank you. Well, despite COVID-19 disseminating airports and airline companies, the Colorado Springs Airport says it expects positive numbers for the rest of summer and the start of fall travel.
Numbers from June show travel is down more than 50% from the same time last year. However, the airport also says it is seeing more travelers than expected despite the recent decline. The airport requires everyone to wear a mask and is checking employees temperatures before allowing them inside the airport. Mm. Here's what's coming up on World News Tonight. Tonight, the fight for racial justice as protesters face off with federal agents. Plus, the summer surge of COVID-19 with stakes this high. World News Tonight with David Muir is America's most watched newscast. 